Just take a moment to enjoy that incredible music. Look at her hands tapping the keys. The little doll dancing in the front. And her teacher nodding his head, tapping the baton. And time to the music. And if you think the music has special quality to it, then let me tell you that this piece was produced in Prague, Switzerland. One of the few pieces that you'll find coming from, you know, we have that wonderful Schlagenwald porcelain doll that came from Prague, but this is also an extraordinary piece. Um, the firm of, and excuse, I'm sorry, my daughter-in-law is checking for me not to know how to say this correctly. I couldn't call her this morning to find out, but it's um, Zabinchek, I believe is his name, R-Z-E-B-I-T-S-C-H-E-K from Prague. This was a very, very famous firm of music box makers, which is why you are finding that incredible quality of music coming from this. This is one of the few pieces that they have ever known to have made that actually incorporated mechanical movement and porcelain dolls in the presentation. Usually it's simply a music box. And this is a very, very extraordinary piece that again, we're just very fortunate to offer from the Hanna Bukas collection. And I showed it in this group because um, it's part of the wooden pieces and the music pieces and the porcelain dolls. And then we have other porcelain dolls and I'm going to show those to you here on the side. All right, on this side, if you recall, I showed you just a moment ago a wonderful early paper mache with the hair design that was uh, simply parted in the front, looped over the, around the face, and then looped below the ears, back behind the ears, and repeated at the back of the head. And that same hairstyle, very, very popular in about 1840 period, was repeated in porcelain dolls, in bisque dolls, in paper mache dolls, in many, many type of dolls, and even in wigs that were made for these dolls. But here is an example in a wonderful early um, period. We've had a wonderful collection come into us, a Linda Mullins collection from Hawaii, and she really sought out a lot of these early China dolls, particularly the tiny ones. And so there's, you're gonna find when you go through that catalog some fabulous examples of these. Look at this wonderful example. I know you all, all love these that have the wooden articulated bodies with the porcelain lower limbs and the little hand, the right hand that is with the fist cussed and a little hole going through it, obviously designed to hold an object, dowel jointing. And let me show you her hairstyle. And then all around the back. Very, very beautifully done. And in case you don't want to show the body, you have her dainty little pants, her little slip with a drawstring waist, and her wonderful dress with the pagoda sleeves and the lace over apron. So a beautiful early miniature wooden piece. And then we have a, in this auction, some wonderful groupings, little vignettes we've done of miniature furniture with dolls. And in this arrangement, there are some really rare little pieces. This is all offered as one lot. Among them is this sofa, which is a very rare uh, piece of Walter Hausen miniature dollhouse furniture. This is leather. It's a red leather sofa with the gilt uh, metallic stencil or painting on top of the red leather. The, fill the pillow is affixed to it, so it's a really great piece. There are two matching chairs, a little doll, a table, the wonderful Viennese enamel miniature clock with the folding sides. And I always, I love these pieces. I love them when they've come in larger size or smaller or whatever, the little wooden um, pieces designed to teach a doll or a child miniature how to walk with the revolving wooden wheels. Very, very great little piece and a little baby in there. So those are some, oh, and this great girl, I love her. Again, porcelain dolls were made with so many variations. For example, you could have painted eyes or in this rare case, glass eyes and even rarer, brown glass eyes. So all these features um, 
point up to for what are rare factors in China doll, and I'm going to turn her around so you can see her wonderful early costume as well. Linda Mullins had a real affinity for Scotch, Scottish costumes, and you're going to find a whole collection of German bis character dolls in this auction that are all wearing these authentic, authentic Scottish costumes, which I just always think are particularly attractive. And this is an, an early, you know, this would be like, well, when Queen Victoria, about the time Queen Victoria be, would become queen in England, and the whole Scottish theme became very, very popular because of Balmoral Castle. One of my frustrations in producing catalogs, well, two frustrations I have, the main ones. One is showing scale of size to pieces. Um, it's always very, very difficult to always show sometimes if something is rare because it's bigger or rare because it's tiny. So that's a frustrating thing, and we try to find all of these little tricks to, um, to show it to you. And one of the reasons I like to do the videos is that sometimes you can get an idea of scale, and you'll say, oh, I didn't realize how big that was or how little. Another uh, thing that is very frustrating to me is every time I have one of these bisque dolls with sculpted hair, I feel like I need to have like four photographs of the doll's head, the face, the sides, the back, the other side, or sometimes even the crown of the head because there was so much detail that went on. And what happened was the manufacturers would take the same basic doll and they would do variations. They might do glass eyes. They might paint it different colors. They might have a snood at the back of the head, and the snood might be painted green, or it might be painted black. So many different situations could be done. So let me show you some of the pieces. These, are, again, are from the Linda Mullins collection, and she really loved uh, these early pieces and sought out rare examples of them. And this is only a fraction of the ones that are in the auction. So I tried to choose pieces that I thought were a sample. So why don't we start on this side? Many of you collect. Um, collect the wonderful dolls of Simon and Halbig, and you don't tend to think that Simon and Halbig was such an early firm that they also made the bisque dolls with sculpted hair and some really great examples. And here is a wonderful example of one. Now look at the features. It's, uh, that's what you always want to kind of count in your mind. What are the rare features about them? It could be the color of the hair. It could be the style of the hair. It could be, in this case, the black headband at the top of the hair and not just a plain black headband, but gilt borders. All little extra features that the maker of the doll had to do when they were creating it. And then what else? What are we finding here? Oh, look, a painted necklace and an unusual one with a little um, cross at the end of it. A very, very beautiful, beautiful piece early si attributed to early Simon and Halbig. Next to her is, an, is a woman that I believe should have had about four different photographs so you could see every angle of her face. And here she is, and you're seeing her with her um, dark blonde hair, light dark blonde or light brown, whatever you would choose to call it. She has a coronet on top of her head, a luster coronet. Again, an added manufacturer's detail in making it. This was all more expense. Every time they did one of these things, it cost them more money, and so you can tell which were the luxury pieces. Now, let's turn her to the side and look at that side profile. And you start to see what's happening. Look at those two black headbands on the side. And by the way, when you were looking at her face, did you notice the gold dangle earrings? Those are sculpted. They're not something that someone has dressed the doll with. They are sculpted on. And look at the back. There we have it. Her hair is coming around, not just the little curls at the forehead, but now you see the hair drawn back into this elaborate arrangement at the back, and when you finally come around this side, look what you're seeing. You're seeing the ties for those bands and dangling on, cascading onto her neck very, very beautifully. And I'll come around the front again, and you can see the gold earrings once again. All those features then, the coronet, the black ribbons with the dangle uh, streamers on one side, and the gold earrings, and she has completely outlined eyes, which again is not that common to find on these. And the little hint of painted lashes, all of these features you learn to look for what are the rarity factors. I love this doll. I think she's got, I think she's got so much class. And I think the way she was costumed was beautiful because it really enhanced 
um, the features of her. Now, when I turn her around, I want to just show you something. See, she's one of the snood ladies. I love that word. She has the net over the back of her hair, a page boy curls, and it's held by a hair net or a snood. In this case, the snood um, is well defined in its sculpting, but it's not painted separately. It's just the definition of the snood. But then bring it around, and you can see at the top of her head, the black headband, and at the sides, this very pronounced bright blue cobalt bows framing her face very, very beautifully. And then her lovely costume with the matching jewelry. Very great piece. She has wonderful tiny little ankles and these big muscular sort of leg, bisque legs on her muslin body. So she's a great piece also. In front of them are two of my favorites and I put them in a photograph together because I just thought they kind of kind of belong together. This man is, this particular model is not so terribly rare. A lot of people think it it's a, represents George Sands, who was always wearing um, men's clothing and she was an avid horseback rider. And so, you know, that's kind of um, a feature some people say, but whoever you think it represents, it doesn't matter. Rarity factors here, brown hair. Turn it around, look at the detail of that well-shaped hair. And I'm sure you've noticed the sculpted bodice with the gold edging and the blue bow tie. And once again, Linda Mullen's collection, this is one of the Scottish costumes and a really unusual one at that. Original costume on him, including the leggings, which is really great. And his, the, his woman partner, she is really quite rare in this size. Um, very, very beautiful. And she has green uh, molded bodice with a green tie at the neck and coming around. Look at those long, long curls. Lovely smiling expression. Coiled, um, the coiled braid at the back of the head. Black bow at the top and molded bodice. Everything rare counting up over and over again. And then finally, look at her feet. No wonder she has little mauve buttons on her dress because she has mauve boots, mauve painted ankle boots to match. Wonderful piece. Now we come on to this side and we're looking at, this is another rare variation. Here they have taken their, their standard um, bisque doll. This model also used in China form, in bisque form. And in this case, in bisque form with this beautiful light brown complexion, absolutely gorgeous. I have not seen this before. Painted brown eyes, painted black hair. A wonderful, wonderful doll. If you're looking for rarity features, you don't get much better than that. This is a super, super little doll. Look at that. that is, this is by Kling, C.F. Kling, who made um, dolls starting about 1840, right on through 1900, and um, made many all bisque miniatures, and also made many of these wonderful bisque dolls with sculpted hair. And this is just gorgeous. Rarity factors include always look to see. Glass eyes, very unusual to find. The sculpted collar, little bow tie with little polka dots on it. How about that? And then turning it around, that wonderful little gray cap with the wide brim, the flat top, the blue band with a long flowing streamer down the back, and gold edging to enhance it. So all of these little things enhance um, the workmanship at the time and hence the value in a lovely antique costume as well. Another one of my favorites is this particular lady. I guess I like snoods like, because she also has a snood and she has different type of decoration at the top of her head. Let me show you the size. You see she has the black band which runs up to the top of her head, the painted black snood which is enclosing the page boy curls, and then large black bows 
at either side of her face with, look at this now, when it comes around, I'm showing you the back first. And when it comes around, look at how these bows are painted. This is the bow part of it. And these are the little dangling streamers. And in painting it, they brought them forward onto the face to give a little, like, almost like little arrows directing you to the attention of the face. She has a lovely costume, which really kind of enhances, enhances the um, black decoration of the snood with her wonderful early uh, black lace collar. And we have this large woman with glass eyes here. She's very lovely, and we, I liked her because she had, she had a cameo, all right? She has a coral cameo with matching coral earrings because one of her rare features is she has pierced ears. And when I turn her around, now look at it, we have one, two, three, four, five, six rolled curls at each side of the head, framing the face. And then when you come around the back, find deeply deep definition of comb marks um, and someone actually had to make that little incision when they were making the doll to get that and then the arranged curls at the back so always in looking at these bisqueted dolls uh, sculpted hair dolls you've got to look at them all the way around and then finally with so many wonderful little miniatures here I just wanted to show you uh, this little presentation that we have you know what the psyche mirrors were they called because of the Psyche paper doll in France came with a mirror like this with a little bracketed. And in this case, we have a Psyche mirror with a little all bisque doll in front of it. And she's great. And if you turn her around as tiny as she is, I'm going to show you as tiny. Think about this. There is sculpted snood at the back of her hair. How about that? original body what a I mean don't you just want to have some of these little things and have little domes and make little vignettes all over your house well I would I think they're just wonderful